Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at our new After Effects plugin, Saber. And I know I say I'm excited, but I actually am excited. Not like those other tutorials where I just say I'm excited because that's my thing, but I really am excited. So let's take a look. Oh, shoot. Turn that off. That's a wrong video. Try this one. So some pretty cool stuff happening here and uh, you can see some energy effects and some portal effects and of course lightsaber effects. Now some of you know recently I had a chance to work on Star Wars The Force Awakens. I had an amazing time. My team was responsible for the holograms and graphics and titles but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to work on any lightsabers. And it wasn't a big deal. It was fine at first but then I became obsessed. The light, the energy, that's all I could think about. Where did it come from? How does it work? Can it lift me from this darkness? You know, then I thought, we should just make our own plugin. So we did. All right, so you've seen what this plugin can do. Let's go and take a look at how it works. All right, so once you download and install the plugin, you can come inside of After Effects and we're gonna create a new solid. And uh, we'll call this Saber. And we'll come over here to the effects and presets. We're gonna type in Saber. And we just drop this right onto the solid. And here we have our light beam. Now we can move around the control points. And one thing you'll notice is that it has a really nice glow fall off. And if I change the intensity, you can see that it just really looks nice. The other cool thing about this is that we built in our color vibrance technology so that it has some really nice colorization. So you can see the colors really pop. Now we could take a look at a few settings here. We've got the enable glow, we've got the color intensity. We've also got a nice spread and the spread and the intensity work well together to create a really wide light fall off. And then we have the glow bias. This is a really important setting. It helps to control the intensity of the glow the more towards the core. So if we turn up the brightness here and we drop the bias, you'll see that it becomes tighter and if we increase it, it becomes wider. So it's just a really nice way to be able to control how tight you want that glow to be. So all right, so I'll go ahead and reset that. All right, let's go and take a look at the customized core settings. So here you can choose the core type. Now, in this case, we're using a saber, but we can also use masks or even text layers. We have control over the start size. So we could drop that down and we can even change the offset, which will extend it. And those same controls are available for the end size and the end offset. Another cool setting is the halo intensity and size. This is gonna control the intensity of the glow right next to the core. So this is nice to be able to make it look a little bit hotter without having to change the overall brightness of the entire glow system. Now, let's go and reset this. That's the basic stuff. Now let's go and take a look at the fun stuff. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to the circle mask and I'm gonna create a mask right on my layer. Then I'm gonna come over here to the core type and set it to layer mask. Now I can go ahead and hide the mask here so I can see the core a little bit better. Now let's come over here and let's set the size of the end down to zero. And then we're gonna animate the start offset. So it just kind of creates a loop. So here we'll just go ahead, keyframe this from 100% down to 0%, right? All right, let's go and customize it. We have a huge list of presets. So we can open this up and uh, we'll pick this one, Patronus. And now let's go and take a look. All right, so now you can see we're really starting to customize it. It's got some nice noise, nice distortion, kind of looks like a hazy smoke. And the cool thing is you can also go and change all of the settings still. So you can really customize each and every preset. 
But did you notice that the start and end size and also the animation didn't change, just the overall look of the saber? So this way you can try out the different presets without messing up your animation. So we could try out uh, Energize. And that's got a, kind of a cool look. And again, we can totally customize it, change it around, and uh, you know get completely different looks. Now, let's take this a little bit further. So let's switch this back to the Patronus. Uh, that looks nice. And let's set the transfer mode to screen. And let's go to the mask here. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to actually shrink it down a bit. Now, I'm also going to duplicate my Saber layer. So I'm going to choose Edit, Duplicate. And it's already set to screen. And what I'm going to do is go to the Mask Evolution, and I'm just going to shift it over. So I'm going to shift it over 180 degrees. So now check this out. So now I've got two Sabers going. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll take the top copy, and let's change this to something else. Let's try this Arc Reactor. So now we've got two different sabers interacting and we've created kind of a symphony of different effects. And this is really what makes saber so powerful is that it's really easy to layer multiple effects together and create complex detailed animations. All right, so what makes this so unique is the advanced distortion noise. So if we come down here to the distortion settings, we can see that we have it separated between the glow and the core. Now, this is really important because sometimes you just want to have a noisy glow and other times you want to actually take the core and make it look a little bit displaced. So let's focus on the glow distortion for just a second. And what I'll do actually is I'll go ahead and click default, which will reset it so we can kind of see exactly what it does. So we have the distortion amount. Let me just crank that up a little bit and start to see a little bit of noise. Next, we have the distortion type. So we have like a fluid looking one, an energy one, and then we have two modes. We have distortion and we have multiply. So distortion is gonna be what it's doing now, actually displacing the field of light. And then we also have our multiply, which actually just kind of darkens it down and you can also invert it. So you kind of have like a smoky look, like a tendril look. Now, next we have our wind speed. So you can see it kind of moves in a certain direction. So you can change this to a negative value and it'll actually move down. You can change the direction of the wind. Also the noise speed. So if we set the noise speed to zero, it just moves without animating. If we add a little bit of animation. It has a little bit of a smokiness to it, so it's kind of cool. Then you have things like the noise bias, which is just kind of like a stylizing effect. You have the noise complexity, which is going to add more detail. So let's see here. You can see like a little bit more detail versus two levels, which is going to be a lot softer. So let's go and set this back to the Patronus. And maybe what I'll do is change the color to orange and hit OK. Now, another thing I like to do, it's not necessary, but I like to add an unsharp mask. And this is just gonna sharpen up the detail a little bit. So it's just kind of a nice bit of crispness that you sometimes lose in the fractal. So I think that looks pretty good. So with this setting on, what we can do is we could play around with the wind. So let's set the wind to say two. And you can see it's moving upwards. Now check this out, there's actually motion blur for the wind. So sometimes when you have a fractal, it can look a little bit computer generated, but when you turn on the motion blur, it can look a little bit more organic as it moves upwards. All right, so now let's go and take a look at the core distortion. So we'll go and open that up. We could turn this up a bit, and this is gonna create a really interesting effect right around the core. And all the same settings are here. You have your fractal type, turn the amount down, and you can really start to create some nice looks. Now, here's a really important thing I want to show you, and that is the way that the alpha channel works with the mask. Now, remember, we added a circle mask to our layer. So what I can do is, so I'll scroll down here, 
and we see the alpha mode. Now, currently it's disabled, but if we turn on enabled masks, it'll actually show what the transparency would look like. It actually crops out the outside of the mask. So this can be a really cool feature because now you can kind of see what the effect looks like kind of inside of a shape. And again, it can be any shape. We can just uh, add additional shapes here and uh, it's all going to animate. All the masks are fully controlled simultaneously. But what else can we do with this alpha mode? Well, there's another really cool mode called Mask Glow. And what that does is only masks the glow, but leaves the core on the outside. So, since we've displaced our core a little bit, we can actually see it extruding past the glow area. And again, and this really helps to create a more organic effect. So to really see what's possible, what you want to do is play around with the different presets. And you can just see how they look, how they animate, check out the settings, play with the settings. Now, I will warn you that the name of the presets are uh, worse than random. In fact, I think if they were randomly selected, they might be more accurate. And I'll try to publish a list of what all of the effects are in their names. Now, there's something else cool about the distortion when you're using the saber instead of a mask. So let's delete the masks and we'll set this back to saber. And we'll scroll down and what we can do is move the saber around. And notice that the distortion and the noise actually follows the saber wherever it goes. I can also turn on the distortion amount and you can see that also follows it and actually goes in the direction. So if I were to turn up the wind, the wind will go in the direction of the saber. Now, what if I want to turn that off? Well, there's an option called lock noise to saber. So if we turn that off, now we can actually move it around freely as if we're moving it through a smoke-filled room. Maybe I could turn up the uh, intensity and see this a bit. So depending on what you're trying to do, this can be a really cool way to create laser blasts or other cool effects that actually pass through space. Now, one other setting here. So let's go and switch this over to the arc reactor. So kind of an electrical mode here. And the way that this is looking electric is simply the distortion of the core. Now, there's an option here called blend on top. So if we turn that off, it'll actually get rid of the core or you could turn it back on. So it's just a way to be able to create a saber that has its base core, but just has a little bit of noise on it, like a particular uh, character in a particular Star Wars movie. I'm not saying who it is, but I'll bet with a little bit of work. And of course you could turn up the noise speed All right, so those are some really useful options. And again, in this example, you can see that this blue beam shoots down, but let's say we want it to shoot into the ground. Well, what we can do is turn up the wind speed and maybe even a little bit of motion blur. Now, even though the effect is two-dimensional, what you can do is you can duplicate it, control D, and rotate it just to add a little more dimension and just change the random seed of the distortion. So we could just change the random seed and it looks completely different. So there's always a cool trick to be able to create more dimension with these type of effects. And keep in mind, you can have a different speed for the core and the glow. So you can create a little bit of separation between the two and just add more detail. All right, so here's another interesting example. So I've got a mask that's animated, and what I'll do is I'll come to the core settings and change the end offset to about the middle. And what I can do is then take the effect and hit Edit, Duplicate. And now I have an extra copy. What I'll do is come down here to the Render Settings and change the composite to Add. And now I've combined both of the effects together. 
Now, instead of them being the same, what I'll do is I'll change the offset back over, turn the size back up, and maybe move the start offset over so that there's a gap in the middle. So we'll turn the start size down to kind of match it. So what's cool about this is that I can change the color and the settings and both of the effects will be linked together to the same mask. So, and you can see here I have a couple more stacked up here that are basically doing the same thing. So you could basically create a whole lot of Saber rendering on a single mask and on a single layer so that it's a little bit easier to manage a path. And of course you can use expressions to link masks together and things like that. So a lot of different ways to work with this effect. After looking at these examples, you'd think that Harry Potter was actually the uh, thing that inspired this plugin. All right, let's go and take a look at a few different title examples. So here's a combination of two separate layers, and uh, we can kind of see what that looks like. Now, same thing here is I'm just animating the end offset along with the mask evolution. Now, again, it's nice because you can really try out some different looks simply by switching the presets. Now, in this example, we have some text created with Element 3D, and we're simply overlaying a nice edge design that's animating on with a little bit of energy, so it kind of has a cool sort of backlit kind of look. It also looks cool to animate the wind, so it kind of looks like it's pushing away from the surface a little bit, so see how that looks. So it adds a really nice touch, and the thing that really makes it unique is the realistic light fall off from the glow. So that's going to come from these two settings, the spread and the bias. And by turning the bias down, you can actually create a much hotter outside edge and it looks more like it's a light source that's falling off and uh, the spread will help you kind of spread it out you know across the entire surface so cool combination there alright now how about creating some kind of neon effect like this well what I have is some outlines in the mask form and I'll go ahead and take the saber effect drop it onto that layer and uh, we'll switch the custom core to the layer masks perfect wait uh, and we just need to bring the size down maybe to 1.5 and bring the intensity down I also like to bring the spread and the bias down just a bit now there is a nice preset actually called neon which does look pretty nice the thing I like to do actually with my neon effects is go down to the render settings and play around with the post color correction so you see the brightness value here now these color correction settings will actually affect the core so if we bring the brightness down it'll actually turn red or pink in this case and uh, it'll look a little bit more like a neon light maybe we'll play around with the start end offset So this is pretty cool and just, you know, just a matter of playing around with the settings here. Now, this is where you can have fun with the light settings. So you might bring this in really tight. And then come down here to the alpha mode and set it to enable masks. And that'll crop out the edges. Maybe we'll even turn on mask only the glow. And that'll keep our edges intact. Now here's what it looks like with another copy. I'll go ahead and set this to add and turn on another copy here. So that color combination looks really nice and pretty much any color combination strangely you'll just see some really just great looks just because light tends to blend together really really nicely. Uh, let's see I have another layer here with some kind of like fiery effect. I think I just used the energy preset. 
I don't know. This is like Empire Steakhouse now. It's great. Now, another really fun example is this right here. And this represents a really cool concept, and that's because I'm actually using a text layer rather than masks. So check this out. My text layer is right here, and I can actually edit it like a live layer. So I can turn it off, but if I double click on it, I can type in a new thing. I'll turn off my stock footage there. And basically with these two layers, you have one that has kind of a nice smooth edge and then one with a little bit of a fiery edge. And you could go through, change the font, uh, you know, really, really customize it quite a bit. And not only that, but you can also change the preset at this point. And just to give you an idea on how this works, basically what you do is you switch it to a text layer and you set the text layer to your editable text layer and it simply uses that just like it would any kind of a mask. And then again, we have the alpha mode set to mask glow and that keeps the core on the outside. So if we went into the core distortion, we would see that effect on the outside. That was actually kind of something I was doing in some of my other examples was using a color, right, and turning off blend on top and turning up the distortion and animating it down to zero. And that combination with the fire layer will just give it a little more of an organic kind of reveal. So there you go. I didn't say it was going to look good, I just said it was going to be organic. Now speaking of organic, one thing that's really important when you're doing effects like this is if you're trying to simulate fire, well stick some actual fire footage into your comp. Fractal noise fire will never look as realistic as real fire, but it helps sell the illusion. So if we just take a couple of clips of fire, stick them in there, various places. You can see that it really helps sell the effect and it doesn't take that much work just to make it look a little bit better. Now, we have a stock footage pack called Action Essentials, and it's got a lot of fire elements and things. You can check that out. Now, speaking of stock footage, one thing I'm tired of seeing are fake-looking sparks. Like, I don't know why people keep using CC Particle World to create sparks, but it's really just not working out. So you guys find some good stock footage of spark elements. There's just a huge difference when you look at real sparks versus something that uh, was created with, uh, you know, CC Particle World. It just doesn't look good. You know, where, where did this idea come from? Let me, let me see here. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for video. Oh, uh, you know, all right, never mind, never mind. Doesn't matter. Now, another cool setting to check out is the flicker control. So what I'll do is let me just type something a little bit longer. And if I go to the flicker settings, I can turn it up. And I'll solo that. And I'll turn up I'll turn up a lot just so you can see it here in the tutorial. Now you notice that it flickers all together. But if you turn on mask randomization, it'll actually flicker them independently. So now we can turn the value down here. And that just gives it a really nice, you know, organic look now. Obviously it doesn't need to be that intense but just a little something to create some separation. You know, also just gives the fire a little bit more life. Here's another cool example of like a liquid nitrogen effect. And it actually has a little bit of dimensionality because I made multiple copies. So we could take a look at one of the copies here and uh, just kind of 
a wave motion that kind of moves downward. Now, here's the cool thing about this particular layer, is that it doesn't have a core. So if I hit MM, we can see the mask, and that's because the expansion value has been turned down. So combining that with a few other layers, you can create some nice looking results. So check out this layer. You can see I just drew a mask that's kind of like a smiley face because I wanted to create like a runoff of smoke just at the bottom area. And that's just one example of some of the kind of tricks that you can do to sort of design the energy in the way that looks good. Now, not to keep bringing it up, but again, here's another example of using a single smoke element to just give it a little bit more of an organic and natural life, yet still blending in nicely with the core. So, just another cool example. Now, another quick tip, in order to create motion blur from masks, you need to use the force motion blur effect. Uh, it's not affiliated with Lucasfilm, but it does work pretty well, so I'll just throw it out here. And uh, it'll just give you a few more samples of motion blur. And uh, even though it's a little bit slower, it, uh, it definitely looks nice and works perfectly with the Saber stack. All right, believe it or not, but a plugin called Saber is actually pretty good at making lightsabers too. So let's take a look at this example here. So here's some footage of Sam running down with his lightsaber. And what we'll do is create a solid. And uh, we'll drop the Saber effect on there. And we'll set the transfer mode to screen. And uh, hit Control shift h It's a good shortcut to know. Hides all the uh, screen elements. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the start point at the bottom, end point towards the end. And uh, we'll just start animating this thing. So here is the way this works. What you want to do is put the Saber core over the Saber in the shot. We'll turn up the uh, size. Now there is a control setting for the roundness, so if you want to fit that just right. And uh, we'll put this uh, about right there. Now we can taper the end size a little bit. And uh, we'll worry about this motion blur in just a sec, right? So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead, add a keyframe for the core start and end. And then you can use page up and page down to cycle through. Now here's the best way to do this. As you move forward, move the lightsaber to the forward direction of the saber. So here's the forward side. Let's move this up until it touches. Next frame, same thing. And uh, so forth. Now we can turn off the glow, which will not only speed it up, but make it a little easier to see. We'll keep going here. Okay, and this is kind of weird, but check it out. It's kind of... But you can see that this motion blur is automatically calculated, and it's specially designed for lightsabers. So, You've got to do a little bit of hand animation, but uh, it's a lot faster than having to do a crazy amount of roto. Now, check this out. See, I didn't quite get it here. So let me go back here, and I'll extend it out here so that it makes sure to follow through and have enough of the lightsaber. There we go. Now, sometimes what happens, this is just an important tip for After Effects users, sometimes your frame gets cached, and it doesn't update based on the animated keyframes around it. And it's always a good policy to purge your memory from time to time if you're running into uh, any kind of odd issues. So we'll keep forward. Do a couple more uh, keyframes here. We'll take a look at this. So already this is looking pretty good and uh, you know the glow looks great. Here's a few tips on uh, getting it to looking better. First of all, 
adding a little bit of flicker is going to uh, be a nice touch. Coming down here to the post color correction, saturation will help depending on the background and the compositing. Now here is the cool thing is the motion blur. Check this out. So the motion blur amount is set to 1. So a 0.5 would be 180 degree shutter. So that's kind of your standard camera and that actually matches pretty well. But since it's a lightsaber, you know, you want to have some of that extra kind of waviness. It just kind of makes it look cool. This thing is glowing out of control here. Hold on a second. All right. But what's nice about it is that there's a blur phase, and you can actually just shift it back and forth in time. So it's like a temporal thing, but it makes it really easy to be able to either increase or decrease the amount of motion blur. So just enough to cover the saber and then the ability to shift it forward and back along the same vector. So it's very, very fast and very, very easy. And uh, hopefully that will save you a lot of time. Now I understand that there's possibly some lightsaber purists that would prefer to hand roto. And if that's the case, let me show you what you can do. If you reset the plugin, what you can do is go in there and uh, draw your handmade roto. Okay, hit M, go to your mask, go forward, and, uh, you know, knock yourself out. Okay, and uh, what you can do then is go to the core, set it to layer mask. Now you can see that it's hollow. It's actually got a hole in it, but then go down to the composite settings and switch it to add, and as long as your layer is white, it'll actually just create a white core, and uh, we could bring the size of the core down just so that it stays close to your roto, and... Uh, all the glow settings and all the uh, nice control and the flickering and everything will all work. And uh, you have your uh, custom control over your uh, shape. So uh, it's win-win. Now, there's another really cool feature, and this is one of the first features that we designed. And that is the ability to occlude the core if, say, there was a person in front of you. And let's go to our saber layer. And let's mask out this stormtrooper guy so that the lightsaber is on the other side of him. So we'll take the pen tool. And uh, we'll just draw a shape here. Not a very good one, but good enough. Okay. So we've added our mask. And I want to go ahead, hit M, and change the mask to subtract. Now, let's come over here to the alpha settings, and we'll set this to enable masks. All right, so we've rotoed this out, but now we have a hard edge right here, and that nice halo, that nice glow is getting cut off, and this gets a little bit tricky. So that's why you want to turn on the mask core mode. What that will do is mask out only the core and actually render the glow on top of that layer. So you can actually see that the results, it's almost like a light wrap. It's very realistic and you can, you know, get it glowing over the top of the edges. And then, of course, you can still refine your mask as needed. But the integration is just much more realistic and you don't have to deal with a bunch of extra layers and light wrap and all that craziness that comes with this. So hopefully that will save you guys a lot of time when you have multiple actors fighting in a scene and you need to be able to roto out sabers in front and behind various things. I'd like to imagine that there's one guy who just finished his lightsaber fan film and that feature just blew his mind. You know, he spent the better part of two years rotoscoping out his friends and uh, he watched that feature and he can't believe it. All right, well, I hope this tutorial's helped to show what is possible with the new plugin Saber. And as always, be sure to combine different tutorials, you know, shockwave, sci-fi effects, 
there's so many different techniques that you can actually bring together and uh, just make everything that you guys do just be that much more impressive. And speaking of which, uh, if I may just take a moment, a moment to reflect on Video Copilot having been around for 10 years. And I was extremely busy last year on Star Wars, and I didn't get a chance to formally thank everybody who has been part of this incredible community. And I look back at all of the different tutorials, uh, and it's amazing to still be doing this and frankly, being able to love doing it every single day. I remember making each one of these tutorials. You know, I remember just the genuine encouragement and, and appreciation. And I'm just truly thankful to every one of you guys. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to do what I do. And certainly the lightsaber tutorial was one of the tutorials that started it all. So it's kind of just interesting to circle back. And uh, again, I can't thank you guys enough. I look forward to all the cool things that we're going to do in the future. So, thank you guys again. I am Andrew Kramer, videocopilot.net, and we will see you next time. I wonder if this lightsaber somehow set off a chain reaction of events that, so that I could one day work on a Star Wars film. I don't know. I do know one thing, though. This planet explosion tutorial didn't help anybody. This is terrible. <laughs> Look at a million people watch this. I feel bad for them. I'm sorry.